So watch her going in for her 100th heart kill of the year. What will her act look like? I think we should indeed top each character off with a boss swap. So why don't we do that? We're going to trade our starting relic for a random boss relic and see what it is that the Watcher today is challenged or blessed with. The Runic Dome can no longer see what the enemy is doing, but we get extra energy every turn. With the Watcher, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It can be quite useful, the additional energy, especially on a character who has a lot of uh, damage output potential. Wondering if we go for the Burning Elite. Root Reducer, thanks for the five gifted subs. Keeping that sub train going, holy moly. The power. There's also three elites up the far left, but that looks a bit awkward. Upon review, I like this path. Get two upgrades for the elite. We can actually opt into this elite instead of this upgrade. Maybe that's the better play. Oh yeah, there is a three elite path with the Burning Elite. I didn't realize that. Yes, that's what I want. And we get to remove a Defend early, which is important on the Watcher. Yes, this will work perfectly. Will this run be the winning one for Watcher? Now's your chance to predict Twitch chat. Wager those hard-earned channel points. Get yourself onto the list of channel cuties. Can you do it? What's the Jawworm doing on turn one? Why always attacking for 12? There's never any other possibility here. Let's skip the Eruption. Go Vigilance, Defend, Strike. We also could have gone Eruption, then Vigilance, taken four. Doesn't quite seem right. On this turn, the Worm can either attack for seven or buff. Doesn't matter, though, because we just play every card in hand. Looks like they went for the buff. We don't get a kill, so we're going to take some damage here. Hopefully not too much. Two or seven. Seven. Stings a bit. Nothing we could have done there, though. That was the consequence of just having four defends in our deck. Such as it is. I don't think pressure points and Runic Dome are great together, but uh, Cutter Fate's very good with four energy. Deals good damage. Let's us look at the top two cards of the draw pile in order. And then we essentially choose one to draw. And the generosity keeps going. Who is Noah? Thanks for the 300 bits. Time Vagabond. Thanks for gifting a sub to visit. Zizzy Vivification. Tassray. Thanks for gifting a sub. And Ferron Ferret. Thank you for 32 months of support. Closing in on three full years. Heck yeah. No membership card here. There is Rushdown. One of the most powerful cards Watcher has access to. I also like Wallop a lot here in the early game. But I did come here to remove a defend, first and foremost. That's what I'm going to do, overtaking a rushdown. We have just enough to buy Sanctity, which draws two if our last card was a skill. It's a little bit less useful without the starting miracle, but still not bad. I think I'm just going to keep our money, though. I feel like we're fine. Ooh, tricky. We don't know if the Spike Slime is attacking or not. I suppose Eruption Strike Strike does kill, right? That's 33 damage. And the small green slime on Ascension 20 always starts with a debuff. I can actually double check that with the... Um, what's it called? We've got the Bestiary mod installed. Always starts with Lick. So always weakening one on turn one. That's a little reminder there. And that mod is called Bestiary, third mod in the mod list here. You can find it on the Steam Workshop. Very useful for playing with Runic Dome. So we just kill the big one. We don't care if it's attacking us or not. This one never does. Cool stuff. Crush Joints for Voln can be a nice early card. Again, awkward without the Miracle, though. We skip these. Hmm. So Laos may or may not be attacking. By eruption, this one, I can kill this one with a strike. 
This one's damage is doubled then. I can play one defend. Or I can go double defend, strike one, and kind of hedge our bets. Most we take is six if I defend, defend, strike. Whereas if I eruption strike, defend, we could take as much as 11. So let's do it this way. Do mods affect achievements? Yes. If you're playing with achievements enabled, you will not... Uh, sorry, if you're playing with mods enabled, you will not be able to get achievements. However, there's a mod called Achievement Enabler. It's the second one we have it, uh, in the list, which you can use to play with achievements. So, yes, but... It doesn't have to. Attacks for 11. And this kills. Okay, perfect life's fight. Car Reality, there's a better damage card. I, think, I like to think of this as a good two-cost attack. You play it once for one energy, dealing six, same as a strike, and then it creates a retaining smite, a double damage attack that you get to hold on to. That's very good. You also get an early remove transformer upgrade. I actually would not mind transforming another defend here, um, but I think an upgrade would also be pretty good to let us upgrade both Eruption and Carviati, for example, to make these first few fights against the elites nice and easy. Brex Meyer, thanks for the hundo bits. Let's transform another defend. Turn it into a follow-up. That's much better. Okay, now we're now we're popping. We are gonna absolutely stomp on these elites with an upgraded eruption. Make this one cost. And let's bop. Let's bop. First up, the three sentries. I tend to find going damage oriented works pretty well here. So that means we're going to play the eruption and end a turn in wrath. Even though it's going to hurt us because we need to kill them next turn. I think the power potion could help mitigate here. I would take a fasting. I would take rushdown or mental fortress. There's both of those things. Battle him's not bad either. Rushdown for draw two right now seems pretty good. Let's do that. Okay, can I kill the middle one, actually? Got 12, 12, 12, 14. Yes, we can just kill the middle one. Take no damage. Try to kill them both on this turn. Actually, no. We can't kill them both, but we can... Take two. Interruption gets us the kill. Two damage sentries. Very good fight. Pennib can double damage. I kind of like the idea of adding an empty fist here, so we have a way to get out of Wrath's Dance. It's an attack with a good upgrade, but I don't think we'll be able to upgrade it. Windmill Strike could be pretty good with Pennib, too. But I don't think we're doing retain stuff much here. Sulfur, thanks for 27 months of support. And another remove. Okay, we can actually lose a strike now. I am Cleric. Are you interested in my services? Question mark, exclamation point. The creature shouts loudly. Yes, I would love your services. Give me a card remove. Thank you. Oh, and Smiling Mask means we'll be able to continue to remove cards cheaply during this run. As the merchant now only charges 50 gold no matter what. That's great news. That means we can remove even more strikes and defends as we go further into this run. 
Really, really happy to see Gremlinob here with his opening hand. Should be a very, very easy fight. As we can just dish out double the damage aplenty. Gremlinob gives you a free turn one. That means he dead, unfortunately. Look at that. We're actually one off lethal with just the cards I drew turn one. Brutal. Poor Norbert indeed. We get a boat thingy, giving us 10 block turn one. And a third eye, pressure points or prey. I actually don't mind a third eye for a bit of block and scry. But unupgraded, I could also see us not taking it. We're pretty good going into Act 2 with just what we have, actually. We'll crush Slime Boss. We'll crush most early encounters Act 2 with a boat thingy. So I think we skip cards for now. Doubt for a curse. If I knew I was getting a shop soon, I would take this deal. But I don't know it. I don't know it. Instead, what we're getting is a dream catcher. Bonus card rewards if we should sleep. I don't think I'll be sleeping. Not a sleeper, you know? Just not. This is not the turn one we want against sentries. Almost bad enough to make me consider a uh, gambler's brew here. I think I'll do that. Discard five. These sentries have additional strength. What do you mean eruptions at the bottom? Absolutely unacceptable. Well, at least cut through fate gets it. We do 14, 12, 12. Next turn could be awkward AF. Probably wanted to end that with empty fists. Ah, uh, this worked out. This worked out. Don't don't fear. 18 kills you, so we're actually good. Okay. Beautiful. White beast statues here to give us a potion after every single fight. Could have had so many pressure points. Wish we hadn't taken so many pressure points. Boop. Bop. Prostrate. Nope. We skip just about everything until Act 2. Looking for upgraded cards. But I do upgrade this. This could fight for the Strength Potion, perhaps? I don't think we need it, though. Just fine. This is going to be perfect timing on the pendant. Oh my goodness. GG, nerd. Vault, Devapoom, Wish. Vault is more glue for the deck. Gets us even better going into Act 2. Still haven't found anything to really build our late game strategy upon. But that's okay. We do have the extra energy that would allow Wish to be reasonable. Wish plus the Smiling Mask would be a lot of reason to go to multiple stores. Which is pretty cool. Tough choice, actually. Vault's definitely the easier pick. I'll go with the Vault. The Gambler's Brew. And see where, uh, see where things take us. Empty Cage. Remove two more cards right now. Shrinks things down dramatically. 
Or we could go even more energy with either the Fusion Hammer or the Slaver's Scholar. Empty Cage to remove another Strike and another Defend actually seems pretty absurd here. If we purge every starter card from the deck by the end of this run, we'll have something that's uh, extra broken. Amazing. Yeah, let's let's keep cutting cards. I tend to say that uh, removal, each removal in Slay the Spire is stronger than the last. The more removals you get access to, the more you can abuse them. And now with two strikes of one defend as we go into Act 2, as well as a smiling mask for more removals at stores. Unfortunately, we can't go to two shops. Look at this, only two shops spawned in the whole act. And they're not on the same path. That's kind of rude. Not sure which of those we'll go for. I'll take some events here. Events could be removals. What are the odds of two shop only? I don't know, but I only know that's a lot higher than the odds of a four shop. Extra turn, please. Thank you. Chose it on turn one, never attacks, just using the hex debuff here. Inner piece, a one cost commentary, something we're currently lacking. This could be a piece of an infinite combo or just a useful source of card draw for us. Either way, I want it. And I'll take a power potion. No, I won't. I lied. In an abandoned temple, you find a giant book open, riddled with cryptic writings. I'm down. Pay 21 health to look at one of three book relics. There's three different options, each of which are a little bit different. Which one do we get today? Ah, it is the Necronomicon, I was wondering. The first attack played each turn, costing two or more, is played twice. And we'll get an unremovable curse. Pretty bad in a deck this small. We also don't have any two-cost attacks, and yet, I'm super taking it. And we're going to keep our eye out for two-cost attacks, like Ragnarok, or similar. This be a full 28 damage. All right, you then are dead. Cards. Show me the eruption, please. Thank you. Ah, oh, you might. This is not a two-cost attack. Dang it. Show me the two-cost attacks. Relic for a writhe curse. I've already got a curse. This is just strength. Strength is good. Start each combat with one strongitude. Right. Gremlin Leader's a little tricky. We don't know if the leader is attacking us or not. Definitely makes things a little bit uh, problematic. Since I have the 10 free block, I'm going to assume that we are being attacked and want the block from Vault. Let's just do this. Make that my turn. 
All right, now maybe we're being attacked on this turn. There's no way to know. It's terrifying, really. Simply terrifying. We were. But that means we have peace, because we're not being attacked this turn. That's good news. Alright, we might need to sleep one time. I'm okay with that. Aha! I thought so. Wallop Plus is here. Now that's a bonk and a half. Deal 12, 13 actually, damage. Gain block equal to the damage dealt, played twice. That's why we take the Necronomicon right there. Oh jeez. Oh no. I don't like this. But we can use the Gambler's Brew next turn to guarantee to find our wallop. There it is. Get bonked on, sir. The bonking. Uh, max damage is 21 plus 6, 27. So if I don't want to take one, I should defend here. Aha! Great success. Alright, good fight. Get offered another cut through fate. Second one wouldn't be a bad idea here. This looks tricky. Let's skip these. Do I not like Foresight? Uh, not if the deck is very small, I usually don't. This is a quite a, quite a useful power the larger your Watcher deck is, or the longer your combats go on. Currently we've got pretty short fights. Another bonus treasure chest. Wow, we've gotten a lot of extra relics. Shuriken! Play three attacks and gain one strength. Also Nunchaku! Every time we play ten attacks, gain one energy. Also, Tantrum Rushdown. Okay, and Potion Belt? Potion Belt's good too, actually. Let's buy that. And yeah, we should take the Rushdown. Wheel Kick's also absurd because it goes with Necronomicon. Or he could have also contained both those cards. Vulnerable to make the wallop hit better is pretty good too. But yeah, let's take the card draw, the rush down. I think that's going to carry us through these final elite fights of the act. Particular book of stabbing is pretty nasty. All right, I'm going to choose to believe that uh, losing my ten block here is correct. So that I can get another turn. Yeah, that feels right. A bonk. And Book of Stabbing attacks for a maximum of 48 in Wrath turn one. It's either 28 or 48 depending on uh, which move it's doing. But either way, we have this full blocked already. Boop. All right, one Book of Stabbing down, getting the bronze scales, how appropriate. And an inner peace plus this time. If we're in calm, draw four. Otherwise, inner calm. There we go. I like where we're headed here. It's 
Disco Tantrum Car Vault. No idea if I'm being attacked. By either of these fools. Part's kind of weird. Just kill them both. There's pressure points again. Indignation, actually pretty good, I think, to apply vulnerable here. Not bad with the stance dance cards that we have access to either. We are fighting Collector. Yes, let's continue to ignore how many pressure points we keep seeing and uh, pick up this indignation. Sixty, by the way. a bit. Good. Lucked out. And it actually dies to the thorns. Also to, also to this. Those two. Any tips for an Ascension 20 heart kill with Silent? Always losing at the very end. Piercing Whale, Malaise, and Wraith Form are the, the pretty much the three best block cards that Silent has access to for the very late game. You'll probably want some combination of those to be able to stop the heart from uh, slaying you too quickly. Perfect. Draw more here. This looks like a good strength potion. Looks like a great next turn, so let's just uh actually even forget the tantrum. I need to draw the wall up here. Let's just vault. Perfect. A bonk. Fifty one. Okay, you're dead too. Jesus. This guy last, apparently. Absolutely stopped. Study plus. At the end of your turn, shuffle an insight into your draw pile. Hey, there's an unusual watcher card I actually don't mind here. More card draw. And I like it more with vault, too. I'm gonna take a study here. To give us a little bit more draw power. And I think going into the collector with Runic Dome, I'd really like to sleep. 18 health is not enough for me to be able, for me to feel comfortable. Uh, even though we might actually just kill Collector in two turns. Don't like this draw. Alright, we can do a bunch of damage, though. Adequate turn one. Got rushed down in play, so we should look to vault this turn, presumably. I'd like to play study as well, if possible. Not possible. Hmm. If 
Collector's attacking. It'll be for a base of 21 damage this turn. Likely wish to kill the minions to avoid disaster here. Okay, here's our indignation. Doofus will already kill you. Jesus, that's a lot of damage. I can empty this for 102, apparently. Good lord. Let's just do this. So we take 21 at most here. That is what we take. Collector could attack again on this turn. Wallop is here to save the day. Inner peace, inner peace draws so that we can then tantrum, which draws tantrum. Double wallop for the big Blanc. Oh, and then just win. GG. Glad we rested. Looks like we did end up needing that, or at least to use potions if we didn't get there. And Ragnarok's here with Necronomicon seems like an absurd card. Let's do it. This gets played twice, hitting ten times. We'd love a talk to the hand from here. Don't have any retain for establishment, do we? No. And we're offered Black Star, Pandora's Box, Runic Pyramid. That's cute. There's only two cards that would get transformed by the Pandora's Box. Wouldn't call that particularly good. Pyramid lets us retain our hand. That's pretty extra. Or Black Star for more relics. The relics are good, but I think the pyramid's amazing here. Pyramid's going to let us line up the wallop with important damage turns. Amongst other hot nonsenses. Already got the green and blue key. Any upgrades that are important? Ragnarok would be a nice upgrade. Oh, I like this path. Many elites and two shops at which to remove two more starter cards. Seems pretty good to me. Who needs infinite when you have this? It's only a couple of cards we're actually going to care about retaining with the pyramid, but when we when we do get to retain them, it is going to matter quite a lot. Hey, how dare you? How dare you? So I believe Wallop gives you the block before. You take spike damage. Yes. Just double Wallop for the kill there. Empty body plus. A decent way to get out of Wrath, but we have so many calm entries, I don't think we need it. We do need ways to block for a large amount, but I think the Wallop is currently carrying most of that. We'd like a Mental Fortress or a Talk to the Hand as well. Those would also help. There's Wallop. Hmm. 
There we go. That was almost kind of awkward. Crescendo. Not a lot of cards that we need to upgrade, so I don't think this Blessing the Forge is much good. Duality would have been a good way to get what we need. Card removal definitely helps here. Cards are reordering at the end of the turn because of the retain keyword. If uh, if we have both Runic Pyramid and a card with retain, there's going to be a bit of shuffling. I don't think we need the Frozen Eye with the Pyramid in such a small deck. We are pretty much always know what we're drawing. Let's keep going. Madnesses. Don't I think we need those. Can already almost go infinite with what we have. Alright, Repto never attacks turn one, so this is a great opportunity to absolutely slap here. Double Ragnarok. Let's get Ragnarok. Thanks, Necronomicon. You are my best friend now. Get killed. Gotta love more max health. Do we want to master reality? See you later, TTRPG. I think we'll be wrapping up the challenge uh, probably during tomorrow's stream. That's a good time. Curse to me, I forgot. I meant to take a break way earlier in this run, and we uh, did not end up doing that. Instead, we've had a rather fast watcher run here to Act 3, Act 4. Oh, it works for the study, of course. How could I be so foolish? All right. Only truly safe turn from Writhing Masses. Curse is turn one. Good luck to us. Ha! Ah, perfect block. I knew it the whole time. Brilliant. Hmm. Bottom card, huh? I have no way to guarantee that I don't get cursed here. I don't think this kills. But we could do some hot nonsense. Let's try that. Let's try hot nonsense. Okay, hot nonsense has not worked. Very well. We'll double wall up, and if it works, it works. straight. No thanks. I actually might like to have a swift potion to use on turn one, rather than three gambler's brews. Let's go inner peace vault here. Ah. Bag of prep gives us more cards turn one. Okay, that solves the turn one problem. Take flurry of blows, foresight, or empty mind. Poor nemesis. 
Toxic Egg, a little late here. Upgrades all skills we add, such as all copies of Pressure Points. Let's get our last key. Orange Pellets. If we play a power attack and a skill in the same turn, we can remove all debuffs from ourselves. That's pretty good. Very nice in the heart fight, especially. Do I want an Empty Mind or Third Eye? Or even a Devil Form? I think we definitely want the Pellets. Definitely want Pellets, definitely want to remove the last Defend. That seems pretty good. Poor Akabeko. Not today, Akabeko. Not today. Still no talk to the hand either, huh? Play the Indignation and the Ragnarok this turn. That's fine. Let's get him. Very familiar Repto fight. That's pretty much exactly how the first time played out. Speed Potion, amazing with the Orange Pellets, although I don't have a lot of ways to block directly. Um, adding a Deceive Reality could be part of our solution for the Heart Fight with plus five decks. We're going to need a bit more block. Let's do it. Wreath of Flame is kind of neat with the uh, Wallop and such. But it's not going to help us block in the late game. We need block for the end game. What is with the random chests we've had this run? It's like the fourth treasure chest in a question mark room. This time with Eternal Feather. Been really lucky with those. And here I'm thinking either Inner Peace, Vault, or Rushdown. Let's upgrade the Rushdown. Make it free. Alright, Awakened One's a little problematic. It's a little bit though. Boss tax for a base value of 20 with their single hit, and then 6 times 4 with a multi-hit. And they'll alternate between those every couple of turns. Every power we play improves the strength of the Awakened One, so it's something to do as little as possible here. I'm just going to play the Rushdown, not the Study, at least during the first part of this fight. the Awakened One very fast here. Bonk. Block for 144. Your move. Short and very, very deadly. High meters next. Okay, I'm just gonna block conventionally on turn one. Next turn's gonna look real nasty for you, time meter. You may deal your two damage to me, if thou must.
a bonk. Nice try, nerd. Foolish, foolish, heal for one. Good work. Easy. This is just a kill, right? Well, that makes it easy. GG! Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be built throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this bibbity boppidin? You prime your stick and slap that hard for 2507. Why use many cards when few cards will do? Alright, let's make the vault cheaper too. Second rushdown is here. Second speed potion is here. If only I could afford the finesse alongside. Or we could just remove a card. We've actually gotten rid of all the basic starters. No strikes or defends in this deck. Last pressure points available. Pretty cute, huh? Highest pre-heart score. We just saw 3,009 on our defect rod and crypt rod, Daddy. That's the highest I can remember. Dupe pot dupes what? Nothing important, actually. Okay, lose the dupe pot. Get double speed pot for heart. Hmm. This feels like it might be my swift potion. It's these two. There we go. Wallops here. But what about cut through fate? Can you find me the good stuff? Yes, the good stuff. With Pendiv, let's go. And boop. Cool. All right, those fools are dispatched. Master reality is here to maybe upgrade the. Safety and the insights we're creating. I don't think it matters much, though. Very much like what we got. All right. On to the heart. Our black strategy in this is going to be dependent partially on the orange pellets, both as a way to get 10 dexterity and as a way to remove the stinky debuffs inflicted upon us by this fight. So I'll keep the study in my hand to ensure that we can do that. Let's just get a point of strength here. Carve, follow up, smite. And that's all we need to do for this turn. On this first turn, the heart debuffs of us with weak, vulnerable, and frail. Our goal is to play a power, attack, and skill all at the same time in order to remove those debuffs. I'm going to drink these speed potions as we do that. So skill, attack, power. And all the debuffs are gone. We get to keep 11 dexterity for the whole heckin' fight. And I'll block for plenty besides. All 
All right, now the heart's attacking us for 45 on this turn. That was the multi-hit last turn, so now must be the single hits. Hmm. Could avoid most of the damage easily. Avoiding all of the damage is very difficult. The easy play is probably just Vigilance Safety. Take some damage. I think we are accepting that that's mostly unavoidable here. Cool with that turn. Could Vault, but with the draw pile as it is, we're not going to draw any better block. Um, in fact, now we need to sort things out a bit still. Oh, I didn't have heck. Ow. With my face, though. Sure. All right, and now our goal is to get back to Wallop here. Or to block for a lot in a more conventional way. Okay, take up to 10 here if it's the multi hit. But note the heart's health is dropping pretty steadily here. Indignation first, then double wallop. Lock this hit easily. Let's draw these two. Okay. And then on this turn, well, double Ragnarok happens. I don't even need to enter Wrath. Get a pen nib. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.